Based in Manhattan, Kansas, the USDA Agricultural Research Center Grain Marketing and Production Research Center is home to the Plant Science and Entomology Research Unit, which is charged with improving pest resistance and tolerance to environmental conditions in the world's most widely consumed grain. You know, wheat is a wonderful crop in a lot of ways, but it has a lot of weaknesses in a lot of ways as well. And those weaknesses are what often cause uh, heartburn for farmers when they think that they're maybe going to get a good crop and then for some reason some stress from an environmental factor, drought or heat or flooding or something comes in and takes off a big chunk of yield. Well, we believe they don't necessarily need to lose all that yield. If we can find tolerance genes for these different factors, they don't need to lose it, they can keep it. Wheat is the primary ingredient of a host of important foods including bread, cereals, crackers and pasta. Wheat is grown in every country in the world, but has particular importance in Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota, Colorado, Oklahoma, and Texas, where wheat production generates nearly $4 billion of revenue to farmers each year. Farmers in these states rely on the Grain Marketing and Production Research Center researchers who combine traditional and state-of-the-art wheat breeding techniques to create the base genetics for new wheat lines that provide high-quality food yet withstand the rigors of today's farm practices. Hessian fly, for example, has bothered wheat farmers since the Revolutionary War. For years, farmers were able to avoid this tiny pest by planting their winter wheat in late fall. Recently, this tried-and-true management practice has broken down. Hessian flies evolve over time to overcome resistant strains of wheat, testing the limits of research entomologist Ming-Shun Chin to find new lines of resistance. Chin is the region's only scientist capable of screening Hessian flies in wheat. While Hessian fly wreaks havoc on susceptible wheat varieties, its economic impact pales in comparison to that of the three types of rust that can impact wheat. Leaf rust is a fairly common disease that causes about $70 million in lost yield in an average Kansas wheat growing season. Researchers continually develop new strains of resistance to leaf rust, but the rust adapts to these resistant genes. Stripe rust is a fairly new phenomenon, first discovered in the Great Plains in the late 1990s and affecting Kansas farmers for the first time in 1999. It returned in 2001, 2003, and 2005, and when at its worst, caused up to $400 million in lost yield in Kansas alone. Stem rust is the most virulent pathogen known to wheat farmers. Kansas defeated a stem rust epidemic in the 1950s when entire fields were completely wiped out by the disease. Stem rust engulfs the stem of wheat plants, preventing nutrients from moving through the stem. Before long, the plants fall over and die. A new strain of stem rust, called UG99, threatens the world's wheat production. UG99 is spread from Kenya and Uganda, where it was discovered in 1999, already to several Middle East countries. Many researchers believe it is inevitable that UG99 will spread worldwide and there are few wheat varieties in existence that can resist the disease. We're talking about uh, one of the most aggressive, one of the most uh, uh, destructive diseases and one that can spread in the wind, by the way, over large distances. So if it shows up in Texas in March, it'll be in Winnipeg, Canada by July. It'll take out a whole continent at a time, is what I'm saying. The Grain Marketing and Production Research Center has joined a global consortium to help fight the disease. Resistance could come from wild relatives of today's wheat varieties. The downsides of that is that these wild wheat relatives often bring along undesirable characteristics as well when you make those crosses. Uh, things that uh, negatively affect the yield potential, uh, or that especially negatively affect quality, of the, uh, the, rise of, of the lines that result from that. So we need to shorten those uh, alien chromosome segments so that we don't bring along as much garbage with us. And that turns out to be a relatively specialized task. And that's something that Kansas State University and our USDA unit collaborate on and are some of the world's best at doing that particular task. So we're basically cleaning up the garbage on some of that wild wheat germplasm and giving breeders something that will uh, not only be resistant, but also be high yielding and be high quality. Mm -hmm. 
As with all of the unit's efforts, the goal is to provide wheat breeders, both public and private, from the Great Plains and beyond, wheat germplasm that can be readily used and adapted to create innovative new wheat varieties that withstand the rigors of today's agricultural practices, yet provide consumers safe, healthful, and affordable food.